Welcome to the Media Minute Roundtable. In this episode, we're going to be checking out the Kong vs. Godzilla trailer, talking about WandaVision, and talking about some of our favorite actors as well. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to the Media Minute Roundtable. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And for this episode, well, last time... There was a bit of a debate about <laughs> Godzilla <laughs> and Kong, and we're going to get back into that right away because yeah, the uh, Godzilla vs. Kong trailer uh, dropped over the weekend. So we yep. got to see, I mean, that HBO trailer that was only small uh, small glimpses of uh, what's going to happen. Now we had a two-minute trailer, so some yeah. things have come to light. So what do you guys think? Um, I don't know. It doesn't look too bad. I'll, I'll probably watch it. I'm not going to line up at the theater, though. Is anybody yeah, going well, to line yeah, up at the theater? Is that, is that's the question. More of a, more of a figure of speech <laughs> 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 at this point. But, yeah, no, I didn't... I've never really been too invested in that universe, but yeah, it looks decent. See, I am, and I'm super excited, but, like, the thing that I'm a little worried about is the fact that, like, with the two-minute trailer, I felt like they gave away a lot. Yeah, I kind of feel like I already like, saw I feel the whole like, movie. Yeah, it's like, it's like you're going to go in there, and it's like all of the good stuff was in the trailer, and you're going to be like, oh... Yeah, it was pretty lengthy, and yeah, uh, yeah I I kind of liked what I saw. Again, as I mentioned last time, I'm more of a fan of the old school Godzilla stuff, but uh, it's going to be interesting for sure. And you know, they got they do have Kong upscaled because I saw a picture of uh, one of the older Kong movies, maybe from Skull Island, where they had like, like humans standing next to him, and in one shot, like the human was like the size of like Kong's face. And now they're the size of like the tip of his finger, so yeah. Like, like remember, like because like, like climbing buildings is kind of his yeah, thing. Yeah, climbing and, the yeah. Empire State Building is and like the, the whole King Kong thing. Yeah, and now he's bigger than all the buildings. See, yeah. this is why I said last time that the design of Kong just did, like I feel like it doesn't work. Like for me, the 2013 one with uh, Adrian Brody, Jack Black, and Naomi Watts, like that was Kong because sure. they they were able to like make him look like a silverback gorilla, which was what he's always was, just a little bit bigger. But he was able to climb the Empire State Building, not sl- <laughs> like slam it down in like one hit. Yeah, and I think uh, I think one thing people tend to forget is that usually the CG in trailers is typically not 100% finished. That is true, yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually didn't know that. So it could look a little different by the time the movie comes out. For sure. Um, the, not, the, <laughs> the kind of angling, there's been some debate on this uh, in the trailer. Like Kong, not Kong, uh, Godzilla kind of looks like the bad guy. Yeah, I'm not in down the for trailer. that. Yeah, Mm-mm. he, you know, mm. Godzilla has always been kind of a force of nature. He just shows up and does whatever. So, I'm kind of wondering if, uh, you know, what they're going to do with that. There's people have been kind of talking about Mecha Godzilla being in there. Maybe that I, cool. I would be down for that. That would be uh, wicked. <laughs> yeah. I think whatever is going to happen, though, like we're not going to see an ulti- ultimate winner because they can't do that. They can't have like. King Kong win at or no. Godzilla or voice, vice versa because uh, people would be so, just so angry. Yeah, if you want to see Twitter catch fire, then for <laughs> sure. But yeah, I, well, they're probably going to write their way around that. While we're talking about that, though, like if, if you guys had to pick like an all-time winner, who would it be? Would yeah. it be Godzilla or would it be Kong? Be Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, hands down. Godzilla yeah. is basically <laughs> like a super being. You know, like I might catch some flack for this. King Kong is a giant ape. Yeah, that's it. Like he doesn't have laser breath or anything like that. Yeah, but you could argue though, like what happened in the trailer with Kong like slamming the laser breath back on Godzilla. Yeah, he like catches <laughs> like, it or something. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I don't know. Like it looks I, like he has like a hammer or an axe or something. Yeah, I'm he kind of just sure. literally dunked on Godzilla. Yeah, so we'll have to see what happens, I guess, when in the uh, movie eventually uh, comes out. But yeah, I'll check it out. Oh, definitely. For sure, for sure. Now, um, one division. It's we're up to episode three now. Uh, we I meant to talk about this actually uh, last episode, but <laughs> I didn't get around to it. But uh, I've checked it out. I've liked what I've seen so far. They're doing something like different. I think anybody who's looking for the standard Marvel kind of action set piece type yeah. thing is is going to be disappointed because they're doing more of a slow burn, more of a uh, you know. There's some uh, strange occurrences going on in the background. You don't really know what's happening in the story. And they're doing this uh, neat thing where they they're basically taking a decade of television and the visual style and like the storylines are kind of following that uh, decade of storytelling. So, yeah, I've I've been liking it so far, and uh, I'm interested to see where it ultimately ends up. 
Oh, absolutely. Like, I've checked out the first three episodes, and I was thinking, like, within the first episode, I was like, oh, I'm going to really enjoy this. Because it's like, yeah, the Marvel action's awesome, but I like the slow burn, too, because I feel like it adds so much more depth and, like, um, more suspense to it, right? So I can see both sides, though, because, like, I feel like a lot of people are kind of like, oh, it's Marvel. It's got to be action all the time. It's got to be, like, go, 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 go. So when people saw the first episode, they were kind of like, wait, what's, this isn't Marvel. Yeah, apparently it did really divide people quite a bit who were expecting, like, explosions and the thing, action but yeah. it's, no it's really more of like a s- sitcom sort of I love it environment. I, think it I think it's awesome yeah it's really different and uh, here, here's my confession I didn't realize that Elizabeth Olsen was the younger <laughs> sister of the Olsen <laughs> twins it was only this week that I, I figured it out I looked at her it's, it's like last name Olsen you know she kind of looks like the Olsen twins I was like, oh, Wikipedia. Okay, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that with so many actors too, though, so it's like, it's it's understandable. <laughs> oh, man, wait till you find out Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father. What? Whoa. Spoilers! Yeah, sorry. Oh, my goodness. Come on, man. Oh, my goodness. At least put, like, a warning before <laughs> that. <laughs> dropping the, drop the big ones Dropping some, some truth bombs. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Superman and Lois. There's a new CW show coming out. Um, yeah, interesting. The, like, the name... For me, evokes like uh, Lois and Clark, the newest adventures of Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. The 90s. But uh, this one, they're taking him. Uh, I don't think we've really seen Superman at uh, kind of this point in his life. Like from the trailers, it looks like uh, yeah, him and Lois are together. Uh, they have a couple kids, and they move back to Smallville. Okay. Which is another show that it reminds yeah. me of. Of course, uh, Smallville was big in the uh, early uh, 2000s. Yeah, that was a good show. Yeah. It was. But, uh, yeah, to me it seems like a super dad. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's like, okay, Superman as a dad. And apparently they're going to reveal to, like, his kids that he's actually been Superman all along. So I'm kind of interested to see where it goes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, the CW, they've definitely done, like, a lot of superhero I, uh, TV yeah. shows. I, 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 I'd like the Mixed Flash. results. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I know a uh, Batwoman has. Uh, Batwoman hasn't been mm, faring has, too well. Yeah, I, I did like the first few seasons of The Flash, and then it got a little bit ridiculous because people kept finding their secret lair, <laughs> and they, they they addressed it. The show's like, yeah, our secret lair That's is working secret. out really well. <laughs> <laughs> people just started showing up with coffee. We should have put this thing underground. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, now, Rachel, this one's more for you. Uh, I've, I've seen a few episodes, but uh, Peaky Blinders, they're apparently going to be wrapping things up with the movie. Yes, they are. Uh, a lot of people were actually really upset because originally the writer of uh, Stephen Knight, he was saying that, oh, yep, season six is the last one, and people were pissed. And they didn't realize that he was thinking about a movie until recently. So when they did release that they were going to wrap up, like, Tommy, Arthur, and Michael's story, it was kind of like, oh, my God, like, how are you going to do this in a season? He's like, no, 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 don't worry, we're doing it in a movie. And then everybody was like, oh, okay, cool. But the problem is the main actor, uh, Killigan Murphy, I believe is... It's Killian. Yeah. No, it's not. He's... Oh, Killian, Killian. Yeah. There we go. So I did say it right. Wait. Don't... <laughs> Yeah, we'll right? later. Anyways, sorry guys, <laughs> sorry Tommy, I didn't mean to say the name wrong, but uh, they're actually a little worried because they're not sure if he's uh, down for the movie. And really? Tommy Shelby is oh like boy. the main point yeah. in Peaky Blinders, and if they don't have him, like yeah. it's not like he's just going to kill him off. Like Stephen Knight has actually said, like we're not going to have the like ability to just kill Tommy Shelby off in the movie. So if like he doesn't sign. It's a little, it's up in the air. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if your main actor is not coming back for like your finale, like it's, uh, it's definitely going to be rough to pull off. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. But is like, it, is it going to be like a movie length episode or is it going to Oh go no, like full out movie. Like oh, he, he okay, cool. he's already got the script written. Like so apparently it's be in theaters. Yeah. that's what he's hoping for. Like obviously yeah. with COVID it's not sure, but like yeah. when he started the series, like he originally was like, yeah, I'm going to make a movie to end everything off. Like, he had this plan from the very beginning. So. Interesting. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if hopefully the main actor does come on because I, I think a lot of fans would be disappointed. <laughs> oh, definitely. It's called that Mr. Murphy happen. for the time yeah, being. Mr. Yeah. Murphy, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Murphy doesn't <laughs> that sign that on. That actor. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> so speaking of stuff Scarecrow. going from like a television show to yep. a movie, what about going from a movie to television? Apparently a Harry Potter TV series is in the works. Oh my god! Yeah, that's. Uh, <gasps> I oh, I mean, I'm you're, down. Yeah, you're more than Harry uh, Potter. Yeah. Like I, I, like I grew up with that though. Like when I, like when I first went and saw that movie, like in theaters. I remember the day. I remember like everything. Like it was, it was like hmm. life changing for me. I was the kid who was upset because they didn't get the Hogwarts letter. <laughs> okay, fair okay, enough. Okay, like. <laughs> Is it like? Do we know about 
are they trying to get the original cast? Um, is it, does it take place? It's still very much in pre-production, yeah. like from what I've read. Like yeah. it looks like HBO is kind of just like putting feelers out. They're kind of like, hey, J.K. Rowling, would you would you be down okay. for a TV show? show? And she's like all for it. But um, when she's not in Twitter trouble, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a that's a different <laughs> yeah, topic. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a whole other <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yes, but, it um, is. Yeah, I would I would totally be down to see a Harry Potter series. I hope that they wouldn't do like them back in school or something because like, like obviously the college the, years yeah like, <laughs> That'd be like amazing. All, all like the actors and stuff getting are too drunk, too old trouble. for hogwarts now but like i'd also be interested to see if they like involve like the next generation like because i know at the end of like uh, the deathly hollow spoiler alert um like they send their kids off to hogwarts and it's kind of like the end of like the golden trio and stuff right so it'd be interesting to see if they're gonna go with like what their kids adventures are in Hogwarts or if it's going to be something completely different or yeah uh, well, I, I mean there's been a few uh, movies and such that they're because uh, they're doing a Lord of the Rings uh, prequel right yeah now, and that's like taking mm, place yeah. like thousands of years before uh, any of the movie events and uh, I believe they're doing a Witcher prequel now as well like really? as, I think so, as a yeah. spinoff so and so prequels seem to be kind of the direction yeah. that they go because yeah. I, I, I never know how I feel about prequels, though, because, like, you know where the story's going. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah, really. It's, it's like the, there's no stakes. Yeah, like the Phantom Menace and stuff like that. It's like, okay, the kid turns into Darth Vader, which kind of took away some of the magic for, for me anyway, but... Uh, yeah, we'll have to see where that goes. Yeah, it seems like they're doing that a lot lately, hey? Oh, Maybe I mean, uh, because of this whole COVID thing, like, hey, remember TV? Yeah. Let's, let's do that yeah, again. Yeah, let's do some of that. But, I mean, like, speaking on Star Wars, too, though, it's like Star Wars released, like, or Disney, sorry, not Star Wars. Uh, they're releasing, like, a ton of Star yeah, Wars series. Yeah, there's, like, literally 20, like, like new series coming in. That's like, yeah, nuts. It, I'm so excited for it, though. Like, I won't lie. Like, the, the nerd in me is, like, I'm going to, like, hunker down, like, every weekend. Like, not do anything and just sit there and watch Star Wars all yeah. weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I kind of like to see the uh, Rogue Squadron. Cause, yeah. Uh, you know, That'd be cool. Jet planes in space, which actually <laughs> makes no sense because <laughs> it makes sense to use drones. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that one. Oh, for sure. Um, now, here's, here's a weird reboot. Hmm. Walker, ten- Texas Ranger without Chuck Norris. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Is he like I never watched the original, so you know, like it, it, you don't even need to. Just, no, if you, if you know who Chuck Norris is, then yeah. like, that's well, all. Well, the that's all you the get. man has so many jokes about him <laughs> out there. Oh, like, he's a legend. Chuck Norris is legend. legendary. Like, d- actually, little side note here: uh, Chuck Norris never realized Chuck Norris jokes existed. Yeah, and then somebody <laughs> told him a Chuck Norris joke, and he thought it was like the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, that was like one <laughs> of the weird. like. Late 2000s memes was Chuck Norris yeah. jokes. Oh, I it's love like, it. Hey, by the way, the internet just loves you, by the way. Yeah. And you go look at it and like, oh, wow. Yeah, like he didn't realize it was a thing. And then he found out and he was like, oh, yeah, wow, you, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine like if Keanu Reeves had no idea about how, the how internet? How loved it yeah. he is? <laughs> and that he just be... like stumbled on it on like, I don't know, like a Tumblr post or something? I don't know. It's, ca- it's kind of wholesome knowing that though. Like yeah. like that they like they don't know and then they find out and they're kind of like, oh, wow. Yeah, they like, find uh, out it's a good thing because yeah. I'm sure Thanks, there's guys. some celebrities that like there's bad memes. Ooh, well, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, well, um, who was it? Matthew Lillard. People were doing like a, a Twitter thing about like actors with a lot of range and somebody was like yo you guys are forgetting matthew lillard who played like scooby-doo and like was in scream and all that kind of stuff yeah. he actually saw the tweet and retweeted it it was like wow guys like thank you and he was just like super like <laughs> humbled he by seems it. like like a That's really nice, nice guy there's Absolutely. like a video of him at like a convention and there's like a little girl who's frightened but so he puts on the shaggy voice and hmm. like leans down and talks to her <laughs> did you see, kind of just on a side note, did you see that clip? Kind of went viral a little while ago of Hugh Jackman like high fiving a guy in the audience. Yeah, and he just like loses his mind. He's, like, oh, it was just great. Made his life. <laughs> Actually, Hugh Super Jackman. Awesome. It was it, it, like this will show you how like intense comic cons are. And he went God. in his Wolverine <laughs> yeah, costume. Yeah, and people were judging him so badly. People were like, "You're too short." You don't like the the claws aren't long enough. The hair's wrong, Wait, and then too, too short for Wolf, Wolverine. Yeah, is like canonically a short character. Yeah, oh, sorry, not totally. too short, too tall. My okay. bad. It was too tall, and then he like ended up doing a panel later that day, and he kept the makeup and stuff hmm. on. And he's like, "You guys are savage. Like, yeah. <laughs> you guys had no idea it was me, and everybody kept telling me that I was like, doing it wrong in one way or the other." It's like, but this is the real thing. Yeah, like yeah. I'm the guy who plays <laughs> Wolverine. Uh, pivoting a little bit right now. Uh, a gameplay demo for Resident Evil 8 The Village uh, came out earlier in the week, and 
looks pretty interesting. Uh, seems like Resident Evil has turned into like a first person. Yeah, I didn't expect thing. that. Yeah, That's like weird. all the the classic Resident Evil gameplay is like the fixed camera, mm, yeah. and you're wandering around with those tank controls and trying to shoot like zombie dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and apparently uh, everyone's freaking out because that tall, like, vampire lady is, like, super hot. Yeah. Have I you seen this? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I, my Facebook feed, there's a there's a few <laughs> posts, people being like, I'm only ordering the game because of the hot women. <laughs> <laughs> that could kill me. <laughs> Not what I expected from a Resident Evil game, but uh, right. it looks, here we are. It looks good, though. Like, it does. Oh, yeah. I watched someone, like, play through the, the demo. And uh, yeah, like the visuals and everything, definitely yeah. get you definitely get like spooky feels. Oh, absolutely yeah, for sure. Like kind of creeping around like a, a mansion where everything's trying to kill you. You still so. got to think it's funny though that like part of the reason people are pre-ordering the game or wanting the game is because of the hot women in it that could possibly kill you. <laughs> at, for, least, for, at least the one. Yeah. For a right? Resident Evil game, yeah, well, like, like it's a weird. <laughs> typically, in Resident Evil games, somebody turns into like a horrific like blob yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at the end. So we'll have to see what happens there. I've played through Resident Evil 2 probably like 50 times. Yeah. I, I, 64. I like those games. I think the only one I ever finished, though, was 5, which was... Uh, I don't think I finished that one. Yeah, the co-op one. Yeah, yeah, But the yeah. highlight of that game for me is that Chris Redfield punches a boulder successfully. <laughs> it's a quick time event, and it's just hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, he's just whacking on uh, his do they, boulder. Do yeah. they still do quick time events? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think they've died off a little bit. Yeah, because they were everywhere for a while. They were. Anyhow. They were. It was uh, kind of a joke. Yeah. Well, I uh, want to bring things back around to movies and such. Uh, one of the things we talked about speaking about for this episode is some of our favorite actors. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about some of those. Uh, for me, I'm going to bring up. Now, you, yeah, if you guys have seen the classic <laughs> Media Minute episodes, you know that I love Bruce Willis. No, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> all the Bruces. Yeah, all the Bruces, yeah. Bruce Willis <laughs> is pretty good, too. But, uh, yeah, he's one of my favorites. Uh, he's he's a B-movie actor. Yep. Never really made it to the big time. I think his biggest movie actually was, like, Army of Darkness. Yeah, I think so. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I've actually seen any other Bruce Campbell movies, but, oh. like, you bring up Bruce Campbell and everybody you, knows you gotta Army of Darkness. you got to watch Bubba Hotep. Which one, sorry? <laughs> That's fine. Bubba Hotep. Oh, okay. He plays a aged Elvis <laughs> who fights a uh, zombie mummy. That sounds fantastic. With a reincarnated JFK, I think. I think so. Yeah. That is Could be wrong about that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, that's that's a good uh, Bruce Campbell movie. Right. Oh, I'll have to check that out for but sure. Ash versus the Evil Dead on Netflix. Yeah, oh, that was that great. was that Amazing was that show. was fantastic. See, that's one of those things that you never thought that you would see. Like, it's like okay, he did Evil Dead back in or uh, Army of Darkness like back in '95, and then like there was nothing in that universe for like 20 yeah. Yeah. years, and then they came back with a full series, which was spectacular. Yeah, it's so much, it's got Xena in it. Yeah. Oh, Lucy yeah, Lawless. Yeah. yeah. Dang, I, I haven't seen her about for a that. while. Yeah, well, I'm, Sam Raimi used to direct uh, episodes of Xena. Yeah, I so yeah that's I, kind of his baby. Yeah. yeah, actually, Bruce was in Xena as a character a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, he was a thief. Whoa. Yeah. 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 Holy crap. You yeah. guys just blew my Pretty mind. Pretty much everything Sam Raimi does, Bruce Campbell's in it because yeah. he's the guy who directed uh, Evil Dead 1 and 2 and Army of Darkness. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, he's in Dark Man, yeah. like in the very last shot of Dark Man. Uh, oh, yeah, he did Dark Man. I forgot about that. He's there. Um, and all the Spider-Man, the first three Spider-Man movies that Raimi directed, uh, Bruce shows up as a cameo. Yeah, yeah. He, he plays does, like right? a French doorman and like a wrestling announcer. I forget the other one. And he always, and Sam Raimi <laughs> always throws his brother in there too. Yeah, his brother's in, and also his old beat up uh, Chevrolet yep, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God always makes a cameo. Yeah. Okay, I've never heard of somebody being like, my car needs to be in this shot. Yeah, he, like, he directed a Western, uh, Quick and the Dead, maybe? Yeah, with uh, DiCaprio, yeah. Sharon Stone. Apparently and one of the wagons, crap. he put like Gene pieces Hacker. of his car up in the wagon just so he could get the car in the film. <laughs> Oh my God, that's ridiculous. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's one of my faves. Uh, cool. Who, who do you guys have? Uh, well, like, obviously I got to go Sir Anthony Hopkins because... Wow, the man's just an incredible actor. And actually, he wrote a symphony, which I just recently found out about. Wow. I listened to it. That and makes sense, though. Oh, yeah. it my makes God. sense. It seems like if, if there yeah. was an actor <laughs> who would write a symphony, it would be, it would be yeah. Sir Anthony like Hopkins. Hopkins. Like, oh, but yeah. It, yeah. It's yeah. incredible, though, because I guess like uh, he didn't realize, because he wrote it, and he never thought anything of it, right? And then like I guess like this uh, Italian composer, I can't remember the guy's name. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, he found out about Sir Anthony Hopkins like writing this and that he wanted him to compose it so mm. him and his aunt Sir Anthony Hopkins wife kind of like schemed and like gave 
uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins the surprise of his life when his music started playing with this composer in this orchestra in Italy, and like they actually got like some com- some camera shots and stuff of it, and he just looks so humbled and happy, <laughs> and it just makes me really happy. <laughs> For sure, sounds very For wholesome. Sure, but I mean, you know, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, incredible! <laughs> you know, I think. The, yeah, he's, he's spectacular. <laughs> he in is. That. Yeah, he's just like, yeah. Like I won't lie, I'm like if I see that Sir Anthony Hopkins is in a movie, I don't care how bad it is. I'm gonna see it just because he's in it. I've yeah. watched Silence of the Lambs more times than I can count. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's a perfect movie. Really, yeah, I think. I remember watching it for the first time in a film study course and just being that blown away. And I was like, yeah. oh my god! But I remember I was really freaked out by Hannibal. So I called my dad, and he was like. Why are you freaking out? Like it's just Hannibal. I'm like, yeah, but he does this weird like noise and stuff. And I was like, oh, he's like, okay, yeah, don't worry about it. Like, well, yeah, and I was like, okay. And then like I walked into my house and like at the time like where I was living, it's like we had a little like side room, and so it's like you could sneak in there really quick and nobody would see you. I walk in and my dad decides to go <laughs> as loud as possible, and I ran out crying like and hid in my car, and he's meanwhile laughing like so hard, and he's like. Gotcha. And I'm like, that's not funny. Your, your dad that's not funny. Great. Yeah, so like, who do you blame there, though? Do you blame I your dad or no. Anthony Hopkins? Because... Uh. A bit of both, I gotta yeah. say. Yeah, plenty, uh, plenty of blame to go around. Yeah, yeah. I right. think so. But right. I also blame myself because I shouldn't, like, I, I, I should have known. Yeah. Knowing my dad, like... Get that close to the chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I guess it's my turn, hey? Yeah. I actually had to take notes. Yeah, because Chris is like... Yeah, like he's prepared. I, I just, just... He has <laughs> things on paper. Yes, in ink too. Yes. Wow. I didn't, so it's serious. I, I, didn't, I did some research. Yeah, good. And I forgot for my first guy here how many good things he was in. Like It's just, it's insane. John Goodman. For sure. Absolutely. John Goodman. Yeah. 100%. Uh, basically any Coen Brothers movie. Yes. Yeah. So like The Big Lebowski... Raising so Arizona, good. Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, yeah. Barton Fink, yeah. The Hudsucker Proxy, take your pick, really. Uh, Matinee, I don't know how popular that one was. That was actually the first movie I ever snuck that into. That was about, like, 50s B-movies, wasn't it? Yeah, he, yeah. he owned a movie theater. They were trying they to do were, all the gimmicks for... Was it the shocking yeah. the people in their seats? Yeah, I remember liking that one. That was a fun one. Uh, the Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, yeah. oh my oh, God, that, that was, was incredible. Yeah, he plays a very, like, intense... Yeah, guy. and you never really know like, is, like what yeah. his intentions well, are. Like, because like John Goodman's like an incredible actor, but it's like I like from what I look at him, I'm like I see this like happy jolly guy, and then like seeing him in that role, I was like, oh yeah. my god, you yeah. know, a lot scary. Of people see the dad from Roseanne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that when, too. He, when he can be intimidating, if he it, wants. he's mm, a large man, yeah. and, and if, when he puts well, what, that, like, when he yeah, he, when he does the uh, kind of the Cyclops analogy from Old Brother, where I that, love that. Uh, yeah. You know, he just picks up the guys and and yeah. just like whoop, you're like, oh my god, yeah. He was in, I mean, I could be here all day because he's just been in so many good things, so I'll try to make this quick. Uh, Speed Racer, a lot of people dogged that movie by the Wachowskis. I have to rewatch that. I liked I've it. seen it, I re- and I, I don't have, like, I don't remember having an opinion on it, yeah, so like, I have to I watch was, it. Yeah, like, I was probably a kid when that came out, so, like, when I watched it, I was like, oh, this is cool, so, like, it'd be yeah. nice to redo it. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I thought, I enjoyed it. Um, all right, last, uh, he played Babe Ruth. Yes, That's he did. That's pretty yeah. cool. In the Babe, I actually didn't great. know that. Fred Flintstone? Yep. Uh, yeah, he's... Nobody could have played Fred yeah, Flintstone like better. That was literally the perfect casting. Yeah, yes, definitely. Absolutely. And uh, Sully, Monsters, Inc. Yeah, for sure. That's and he, he, he's done a ton of voice acting, but oh, I think that's probably... Yeah. The, the one that, like, gets me every time is, like, I recently found out was John Goodman was We're Back. I don't know if anybody oh, remembers yeah. that. Oh, yeah, the dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, it's like, he's, like... Rex and Rex was my favorite because he always had such a nice voice and so knowing it's John Goodman makes it like a thousand times better. Yeah. So yeah, there's my first John Goodman all the way. I'll Absolutely. watch anything with John yes. Goodman in it. <laughs> yeah. uh, my second actor is uh, Sigourney Weaver. Heck nice. yes. I nice. mean, Sweet. she was a powerhouse in, yeah. in the 80s and like she has a whole, she has the range for like pretty yep. much yeah. anything because I mean, she went from playing Ripley in Alien and Aliens and there's basically two Ripleys because the Ripley in Alien is different from the Ripley yep. in, in Aliens in terms of personality. Like, Absolutely. You know, she's encountered these creatures before. And then, like, same time, she's did uh, she played Dana Barrett in Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. I forgot about I remember, that. Yeah, that, like, yeah. she was, like, Bill You know, Mary, she was, Mary's? like, a, a cello yeah. or something <laughs> like that, you know? So uh, pretty much everything I've seen her in. Galaxy Quest? Galaxy Quest, yes, where she plays an excellent, like, pastiche of, like, uh, you know, women in sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. How, how they're not given serious roles. Yeah. And that was uh, that was spectacular. But, yeah, she's definitely, you know, if there's a Sigourney Weaver movie, I'll probably watch it. The one yeah. that I can think of that, like, really hit hard uh, was Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. When she was in that one, I was like, what? <laughs> like, as soon as she showed up, I was like, yes! <laughs> I was so excited. But, yeah, yeah, really all you have to say is, like, Aliens... 
yeah. Gal- Galaxy Quest. Th- that's my, that's the argument. Like, yeah. yeah, you don't really need to say much more. Than yeah, that. well, she went. From <laughs> Alien is like serious as and horrific as anything, and Galaxy Quest is super fun. Yeah. yeah. So you know, she's she can do anything in between. Yeah, no, Sig- absolutely. Like, Lee's is great. She's definitely one of those actors that like you know it's going to be a good movie just because she's in she's it. She's not really around much more, is she? Yeah. She's um, doing Avatar. Yeah. I guess. Oh. Yeah, she was in Avatar. I forgot about that yeah. actually. But huh. yeah, no, like she's. I would argue that she's probably the queen of sci-fi. Yes, absolutely for sure. She she embraced it mm-hmm. for sure. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't argue with that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on. Oh, I guess <laughs> that's else me. for you. Yeah. Um, I would have to say Jeffrey Wright. I think he's underrated, he's and I good. think he's an extremely good actor. Um, yeah. I first saw him in Lady in the Water, and I know that movie kind of had a lot of like mixed reviews because M Night Shyamalan has some like good hits and yeah. not so good hits. But <laughs> I'm a sucker for M Night Shyamalan, and so it's like I remember watching that movie, and Jeffrey Wright's character was so well done, and I was like, wow, this guy can really act. And then actually, you're the one who showed me uh, Basket or. Basquiat. Basquiat, my bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and he played the main uh, character, and it was incredible. Yeah, really good movie. I was blown away. I was like, damn. But, uh, I'm like, this guy can really act. Yeah, so. is that a, about Jean-Michel Basquiat? Yep. Famous uh, artist in the 80s? Yeah. Really good movie. Yeah. Nice. But no, yeah, I definitely think he's underrated, so he's definitely on my list. All right. Well, I'm, my next guy was actually in Basquiat with Jeffrey Wright. He was also in Harry Potter. Oh, I know who this is. Going Gary Oldman. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gary Oldman for the win. Yes. Oh, that guy the has professional. Range. He's been in so many things. Yeah. The professional, I mean. Oh, yeah. So good. Uh, I know this, The Fifth Element. Oh, so it, was, it seemed like a love it or hate it movie. I, th- I really liked it. I, I, yeah, I, I, I love The Fifth Element. Yeah, I thought it's it was just good. a ton of fun. Yeah. I, yeah, a lot of people do not like there, that movie. There was nothing really. weirder, though, than seeing Ga- or hearing Gary Oldman talk in that accent. Like, yeah. when he came out, I was like, okay, this is going to be awesome. And then it was like this crazy accent. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> but he, he was in the Nolan Batman film. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gordon. Commissioner Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. True Romance as a white <gasps> dude with dreads, drug dealer. Yeah, like, that, that was messed weird. Up eye. He's not in the movie for very long, but it's such a memorable yeah. performance. Absolutely. Yeah, like Christian Slayer kind of 86 is him pretty quick. But such a such a good character, Sid and Nancy. Yeah. Of, of Sex Pistols fame. Uh, Basquiat, we got that. Immortal Beloved, where he played uh, Beethoven. Oh. Yeah, Gary Oldman is Beethoven. Yeah. Check that out. Well, well didn't yeah. he didn't he also play Winston Churchill? That's how he yeah. got his Oscar, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was uh, what last year, year before. Twenty nineteen, I think. Yeah, recently. Hmm. Uh, he played Dracula. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. The the uh, Bram uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Francis Ford Coppola. That's who did that one. Yeah. yeah. I know a lot of people hated that movie, but I, I actually didn't, didn't mind it. I couldn't. I didn't like it. I don't know. Gary Gary, Oldman I, was awesome. Yeah. I think it's very good visually. Yes. I mean, the, that like red armor. That, oh, that, that was cool. Awesome. Like, that's kind of super muscle. iconic. Yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, yeah, yeah. I didn't like it. Well, see, Sir Anthony Hopkins was in that one, too. He played yeah. Ben Wasn't Helsing. Keanu in that? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Oh, my yeah, God. He was. he was. uh. I don't remember the name. Oh, he was the main guy, though. And then, uh, what's her name? Winona Ryder? That's it. She was in it, yeah. too. Yep. Yeah, that's like yeah, a powerhouse crazy. of the 90s. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I just didn't like the movie. But one weird thing, when I was looking up uh, Gary Oldman's uh, filmography, he's done a lot of video game voice work. What? Like a bunch of Call of Duty games, <laughs> yep. which is weird. To me. I, I don't know why that's weird, but it just seems weird. Uh, Spyro. He's done Spyro. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Did he play? Did he actually play Spyro? Was like no, he, like, I think he the it was a, a different character. Oh, we're getting, yeah. Hi, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, a lot of Call of Duty games. That's just yeah. really surprising. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy that. That's good. It, I like it, that. It's weird. Like you see Hollywood types drop into video games once in a while. Because yeah. I think Martin Sheen was in like yep. uh, Mass Effect. Yeah. Two. Yeah, t- yeah, he was. Yeah. He was the like smoking guy or whatever. So Yeah, Jeffrey Wright was actually in, in a few too. Really? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember what, oh, but like he was in the two. dots. Look at us. Yeah, wow. Small world. Yeah. <laughs> small world. Between the three of us, we have some approximate knowledge of yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. At least a little bit. <laughs> we've, seen the, we've seen the same three movies, so yeah. that's good. Yep. Uh, I guess it's your turn, man. Yeah. Uh, who's for, the last one? For my third one, I wanted to go with someone who's kind of modern and still making movies. Um, Adam Driver. Uh, okay. Heck yeah. I know okay. s- some people, you know, he played Kylo Ren in like the most recent Star Wars films. You know, love those or hate those. Uh, I think he gave a great performance. And everything that I've seen him in, even if the, like, the movie itself has disappointed me, I feel like he's giving it, like, 110%. Absolutely. I yeah. totally agree. I mean, Reddit loves him. 
Yeah, for sure. He is a meme factory. Oh, yeah. He's great. <laughs> but like, he's yeah. also 3C thick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. But yeah, no, I feel like uh, in the Star Wars, personally, I didn't like the new Star Wars installment, but I felt like he... He tried to play a really good, like, or he didn't try. He did play, like, a really good bad guy. He was, like, struggling with that internal, like, am I really good or am I actually evil yeah. kind of thing. So I, th- I don't think people gave him a fair shake. Yeah. Like, I wasn't a huge fan of Marriage Story. But the, yeah. But the performance that yes. he gave was fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, I haven't seen either, but, yeah, I yeah. heard it. Like, yeah. a Marriage Story is, it kind of comes off as Hollywood pretentious. It's one of those Hollywood stories about Hollywood that people <laughs> seem to love in Hollywood. That was like Birdman, I, that Birdman oh, movie. Yeah. I couldn't get into that yeah. at all with Keaton. Yeah, yeah, Michael Keaton. Because yeah. it was one of those actor stories about actors, but <laughs> like so self-serving. Yeah, it, like, it, yeah. It, it turn off. Seems a little pretentious to me, but uh, that's fair. And he was in that. Uh, I think he did that zombie movie with Bill Murray. What's Dead May Never Die or whatever. <gasps> I for oh my god, yeah. yeah, I totally forgot about that movie. Yeah. And he was in Logan Lucky, which uh, I liked as well. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah my last one is uh, Charlie's Theron. Yeah. She's sure. actually the highest paid actress in the world. Or really? one of them. I would think like yeah. Scarlett Johansson or something. Oh, yeah, definitely. But like she, I guess like she's like, well, it's Charlie's Theron, I guess. Like if you if you want her, you're going to have to, yeah, you're gonna have have to, to pay, pay, pay because yeah. like. Yeah, open up that wallet. Like her acting skills for me anyways, I love watching her. Like no, I don't, great. I don't, yeah. yeah. Not like, just because she's super hot, but she's a. She's got some yeah. acting chops good, for sure. A, well, the cra- the craziest fun fact I guess I know about her was that uh, the whole way she got into acting oh, yeah. was like she was at a bank and uh, there was a talent agent there and he was behind her and she was arguing with the teller because yeah. like something went wrong or whatever. <laughs> After that, the agent like ran after her and was like, you'd really know how to argue. Do you want to be in movies? <laughs> and like, that's how she got into it. And like, wow. I remember watching the first movie I watched with her was Mighty Joe Young. Yeah. And I was in love with her. Like the minute she walked on screen, Sp- I was like, Speaking wow. of giant monkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> full Stand <circle>. on brand. <laughs> Gotta keep on brand. I think Two Days in the Valley was the first thing I saw her in. Yeah. Yeah. That was like a, one of those nineties, like Quentin Tarantino. Everyone was trying to rip off Quentin Tarantino. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. Fair. It's, like, it's got multiple storylines and it's like very yeah. little edgy and, there's a batch of those movies yeah. that just kind of... Yeah. yeah, that's a good one, though, I'd yeah. like to say. Uh, Chris, who's your third one? My third one's a bit of a curveball. Okay. I don't know this one. And it's a little bittersweet, one. too. Okay. Oh, no. David Bowie. Oh! Yeah. Yep. Going David Bowie. Yep. I should have known that. I, know, I thought you might kick yourself Craig, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Labyrinth, good. obviously. Oh, my God, yeah. yes. Also in Basquiat. Yes, he was. As Andy Warhol. Okay, yeah. Watching, seeing David Bowie, because obviously he knew Andy Warhol... Yeah. Watching him play Andy Warhol is one of the best things you'll ever see. It's amazing. Yeah, he did a great job. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I haven't seen it. Uh, I, I can let you borrow it. Yeah. Twin I Peaks. See. Twin Peaks, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God, he, yeah. He's in uh, that. He also was in the, a Christopher Nolan movie called The Prestige as Nikolai Tesla. Yeah, that was fantastic. What? Yeah, he played Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> have you not seen The Prestige? No, but apparently oh I got to put it on my list. Oh, yep. my God. Okay. Yeah, so Christopher Nolan and uh, Christian Bale yep. and David Bowie. Mm-hmm. That's a triple threat yeah. right there. And Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, the man who fell to Earth. Yep. Yeah, that's that was he was like an theory. alien in that yeah, one, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. 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 With uh, no genitals. This, uh, The Hunger. I yep. have no uh, idea what that one is. Um, uh, I'm, fr- I'm dropping the ball on who directed that. It was a 70s movie. It was pretty popular. They made, I think, a TV show out of it, too. And I didn't even realize this until I looked it up. He was in The Last Temptation of Christ. As was Pontius he? Pilate. Really? He played Pontius Pilate? Like yeah, the... directed by Martin Scorsese. <laughs> I didn't even know that one. Yeah. With Willem Dafoe, he was in that. Wh- who? What? Yeah, right? I'm very... What? But yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, obviously he wasn't in a ton of movies, but the stuff he was in, like, look out. Yeah, no, he yeah. was... Uh, Labyrinth, obviously. But, I mean, Labyrinth oh, is kind of his the one that he's well known yeah, for. Yeah, it's the, the movie starring David Bowie's junk. Yeah. Literally. Or his yeah. cod piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, David Bowie's my last name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I think we all had uh, an interesting bunch of people. Absolutely. We're going to switch gears now and talk about graphic novels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Put my notes away. Hold on. We'll, we'll give Chris a second here. Yeah. But, uh, I'm going to, hopefully this doesn't mess up the focus. Yep. What we got? I'll, I'll let you take it away. I'll like it. Yeah. Uh, are, these, so are these in order? <laughs> One, two, three? Okay. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Sweet. Uh, Sega. Right um, Chris actually introduced this to me. I think you as well. Oh, yeah. In yeah. April. Uh, it's a few years old now, right? Uh, yeah, I think it started in 2012. So it's been around for quite a while. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've been enjoying it. It's uh, it's, it's kind of Romeo and Juliet. Definitely. 
And yes. it's also uh, something that you don't see a lot of, which is science fantasy. Yeah, it's like, yeah. really they cool. They can combine like magic and uh, mm-hmm. technology. And I love the way that like anything goes in this universe. There's like oh, yeah. robot people with monitor heads. There's yeah. like uh, lying cats. The cat will tell if you're lying. <laughs> I love that cat. You know, lying cat's amazing. Yeah. It's uh, spectacular. Like the whole kind of mishmash of different like sci-fi creatures stuff kind of re- – don't take this the wrong way. It kind of reminds me of He Man because that was kind of a mishmash of <laughs> yeah, no, like totally. technology and uh, magic as yeah. well. I so. can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. But uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah you th- you kind of really kind of pinned it down there uh, for sure. Um, not for kids. No, 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 no. no. Do not let your kids for, read this. Uh, mature, mature readers only. There's a definitely a sex and violence and yeah, not ton, uh, not a ton of it. It's not about that. But it's no. in there. Yeah, it, it, it's a part of yeah part of the life. It's part of the yeah, part uh, of the universe. And so uh, Brian K. Vaughn, the author, who's uh, done lots of books, and he will probably make another appearance on here. Nice. But uh, he also wrote for Lost, by the way. But just oh, like wow. the t- like the TV show. Yeah. Oh, snap! But All uh, right. fun fact. But uh, yeah, he kind of has a reputation for being like the master of the page turner. Yeah. So like he'll turn the page and be like, "Oh, I didn't see that coming." Oh, yeah. So he kind of has a reputation for that. And actually, the artist, Fiona Staples, is Canadian. She's from Calgary. Excellent. I'm always down for Canadian. I met her at Chapters. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah, she's doing a signing. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah, Yeah. super nice. But uh, I I definitely recommend it for people who are looking for... The, the, the struggle that I have with, like, graphic novels and stuff is kind of, like, where to start. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because some stuff's been going on for so long. But oh, yeah. there's, like, what, nine of those yeah. out now? Yeah, uh, ten, it looks like, should be coming out soon. It, it, it's been on, I don't know, it's just been on hiatus for yeah. whatever reason. But just start at volume one, and that's, that's yeah. all you need to know, really. Yeah, even the first page, I can't really. Uh, yeah. We won't go into the <laughs> but it, it sets no, the no tone. Spoilers. But yeah, again, not, not for not for the kids. But uh, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, man, woman from warring planets yep. have an illegal baby, and now they're on the run. Yeah, and they meet lots of interesting characters along the way. They do, and don't get attached to all the characters. Yeah, don't they're do not, it. They're it's not afraid yeah. to kill people off in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like I am an emotionally, like I'm emotionally in, scarred. Invested. Yeah. Like from the series, because there was people that I fell in love with and I shouldn't have. Yeah. And uh, it took yeah. me a while to, I don't know, if, I don't even know if I'm still over it at all, to be <laughs> honest. <Yeah. laughs> well, I mean, pretty much every character, like you get that initial impression and then they dive into those characters more. So yeah. like almost every kind of main character is, is, and a lot of side characters are fleshed out. So you're, yeah. you're, mm-hmm. you're rooting for them as well, but maybe you shouldn't be. Yeah, like it's one of those, like, I really enjoyed it because it's like the side characters, it's like usually like they're kind of just like, okay, this is this guy, whatever. But yeah. it's like the fact that they like dove into it was like, hey, like this is this person. They have like a family and like all of the, there's interests. You're just like, okay, now I'm invested. And then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, there, yeah, there is I'm a lot more now. going on than just like their story. Oh, there's absolutely. There's a ton going on. Yes, yeah. which is nice. But uh, yeah, no. Everyone we've recommended this to loves it, so we're batting a thousand over here. <laughs> it will make you cry. I'm just putting that out there now. And laugh. And yeah, of course. Yep. You go through all the emotions. Yes. So sure. I, it gets the uh, media minute guarantee. Thumbs up. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> go spend some money. Yeah. Buy a book. Well, that pretty much wraps up this edition of the Media Minute Roundtable. Thank you so much for uh, watching us. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. And uh, we'll be back again. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Christopher Raskowski. Dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, I swore. Oh. To <laughs> <laughs> Bleep it out. All right. Let's start, let's start that again. Yeah. That's it for this edition of Media Minute. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. Godzilla is a dinosaur. My mom's going to kill me if I don't mention this, so we're going to have to redo that. Uh, Michelle Williams, apparently, is one of her favorites, and she told me if I didn't mention it, I'd be disowned. I mentioned her mom. She's a good actress. Okay. Don't disown your daughter. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll Over see you Michelle next. Williams. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>